Hi everybody, Marty Geyer here again, and we're back to talk about a couple more AI concepts from uh, this time from Chapter Four. I want to review these concepts. We went over them pretty well in discussion, but just to make it visually clear, this makes a nice graphical presentation. So I thought I would give this a shot. Um, I hope this helps. Please let me know. So what? What we have now is we're actually going to do away with our old friend, the 8 puzzle for now, and put him back up in the corner. I'm sure we'll come back to him, though, so don't forget about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to move now into a different kind of game, because it's easier to demonstrate. Uh, in the 8 puzzle, the idea is you can only move state to state, and you can't kind of move anywhere in the search space. So we're going to change the game a little bit. And it's difficult to think of uh, a lot of examples of these, so I apologize. And we kind of try to brainstorm in um, in the discussion. But what I've got here is an example of uh, one of those little shaky puzzles that I think we've all, well, I'm old, so I had when I was a kid. Um, hopefully you've all seen, heard of them at least. So the idea is you have a, a little silver ball in a puzzle, and you tilt and move it around like this to try to get the ball into the hole. So what I have here is the hole over in the corner. Um, which is perhaps not a particularly challenging puzzle, but it'll do for demonstration. And the ball with a little dot over in this corner. And I have a little bit of a maze set up. And I know it's hard to see, but you get the general idea. There's, there's walls and corners, and you kind of have to go like this to navigate a ball around. That's the, the general idea. Now, the thing about this is you can kind of start anywhere. This is very different than the 8 puzzle, um, where you're given a start state or chess or anything else. You can start anywhere you want. So the start position I have over here it's just arbitrary. We could just shake it a little, and it would end up starting, say, there. We could shake it again and end up starting there. Or, for the sake of argument, I'm allowing us to, you know, we can navigate it to it starts at any given point. Uh, in other domains, mostly scientific ones, uh, this is very common, such as biology, where you're searching DNA, uh, or chemistry, where you're searching through uh, a search space of, uh, of formulas and chemical compounds and bonds. And I'm not particularly adept at all those uh, areas, so you'll forgive me for a lack of specificity, but that's the general idea. So this does apply in a lot of domains uh, to try to motivate this, this, this uh, when we use this. So if you do have a situation like this, um, what you want to do is, or what one first thing you would try to do is do hill climbing, and that's what we talked about discussion, which is basically you have an evaluation function, and here we'll talk about just Manhattan distance. So the closest you are to this corner, which is the solution, x and y, and maybe z in a three-dimensional way, but here just x and y, will give you a highest evaluation or, or lowest, whichever way you want to go. Um, for the purpose of this diagram, we're doing maximization. So higher values are good, lower values are bad. But it doesn't really matter. You can reverse the graph and have the same problem, local minimum instead of local maximum. So. Um, with that as an evaluation function, what we plotted here is a state versus evaluation. You're going to kind of go like this, and you're going to work that ball towards the state. And you visually get that representation. Well, the closer it is to, to the end state, the better, right? So when you're moving it along, you're trying to move it x and y, y is over there. Now, if you couldn't see all the walls, your first strategy might just be always move it further x and y as much as you could. But of course, you're going to run into some corner walls when you do that. So the evaluation function here, what we've plotted is uh, a sample random through the state. And what's going on now is you kind of chug through. This is basic hill climbing. And you use the heuristic function of, of x, y, Manhattan distance to determine your value of how close you are to the goal. And the higher values are better, like I said here. So you start off in some weird bad state, and you move up, 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 up. And you might hit something here, which is called a plateau, which is everything just doesn't move. And here, this is, this is a local maximum, because this is the global maximum. This is the solution over here, let's say. And notice it's very uneven. So you could be at the solution, and then on the other side, you could be in a really bad spot. And on the other side, on the first side, you could be in a really bad spot. But the solution, kind of right in the middle, is the solution. That's maybe not what I've drawn up here, but you can imagine a situation where that occurs. Now, hill climbing, important to remember, hill climbing by itself is simply up, 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 up. And when you can't go up any higher, when you get to a point where you're at the local maximum or even just the plateau here, you simply stop. You don't do anything else. That's it. Basically, hill climbing is you keep going until you maximize your, 
heuristic value, and once it's maximized, you're done. Now, obviously, that doesn't work because sometimes you have rough spaces like this, and you would say this is the solution if you started here. But notice that if you started here, you'd find that this was the solution. So you'd be right some of the time and wrong some of the time. And that's okay for hill climbing, but that's not ideal. So that's why we have these other uh, algorithms we talked about, which are variations of hill climbing. So first one is random restart hill climbing, which is kind of what I just said. So you might want to start here to start with, and you hit this as a solution. You save that solution and say, okay, that's my solution, but I'm going to try again to make sure that that is really the solution because I don't trust myself. So the second time you start at random again, and you uh, maybe started here, and you might end up going that way, for example, and end up here, and you say this is the solution, and you compare and say, oh, well, I did better. So let's throw that one out. This one is a little bit better, but that's only you know two. That's not really statistically a good idea. So let's do a couple more. So you do a couple more, and maybe you do uh, ten or twenty. And you realize that this is the solution. If you do enough random restarts, statistically, as long as your space is even out and not really, really crazy, you should always get to the solution most of the time. And then your algorithm will have found that's the correct global maximum solution.